So everything, if you just really pay attention, there's so much to provoke fear. To provoke fear, provoke self-preservation. Self-preservation uh, influences war and influences violence and anger. And you just stay enslaved in that mindset. And we can, we can have all these conversations and we can be scared that our society is going to deconstruct, which I honestly believe it's going to. Um, have you been following the migration crisis, Erin? Yes. Now, I think from reading some of your tweets, you're, again, skeptical of it in the way it's portrayed to us um, in the form of an invasion to also probably to continue to keep us enslaved in these same kind of mindsets and ideas. However, with that being said, I can't get this recent Brett Weinstein interview out of my head where he went down and he visited uh, that section in Guatemala where um, the migrants have to travel through. It's called the, the something pass. I, I can't remember. The name yeah, something yeah. pass. Sorry. I'm, I'm where it's really treacherous to pass through. But um, what he was observing there and talking to the mig migrants is that many of these people are given basically maps and phones and money that are funded by these NGOs, these non-government organizations. And you see like the United States flag and all these um, places for them to be housed. And what he can't get over is there's a large scale mass migration of young Chinese men who look like they're military that's being funneled into complete open borders. So um, we'd have to completely ignore that. Um, and I can't. And it certainly seems it's meant for a purpose that is going to create chaos. And if you are going to usher in more surveillance, more control in a world government, you do have to take down the most powerful country in the world, uh, a culture and an, that is, at least on the idea, built around the illusion of freedom and independence. And you have to create mass chaos. And even when we have previous podcasts here where we talk, when we referred to like Matthias Desmond's work on mass formation psychosis, free floating anxiety, you have to create free floating anxiety and then completely disrupt a person's ability to connect with any objective reality, which is exactly what is happening in United States culture. Yeah, I think that the immigration crisis is multifaceted. I don't, I, I wouldn't say that what you're describing isn't happening. I would say that there has always been mass movements of people. And if you look even between the Trump administration and the Biden administration, the way that it was reported on was vastly different. When Trump was in office, there was mass movements of people. And there was all of these cries from people that identified, you know, as liberals saying, Kids are in cages. When Biden came into presidency, there was actually more migration. There were more kids in cages, but that wasn't reported on, right? So I think there's, excuse me, definitely the way that it's reported on and the way that we hear about it is manipulated and controlled. However, does that mean that there aren't people that are being purposefully flooded into the U.S. in order to create chaos? and destabilize the country. No, I do believe that that is happening. However, the discourse on it is just so unfortunate because instead of kind of coming from a more open-minded point of view like you, you know, just explained, people are, it's just creating more division, more, you know, um, fear of the other, fear of cultures and people of different countries. Um, and that's just something that I've always spoken out against because, number one, how dare we as Americans uh, hold that viewpoint, uh, you know, based on our own history here? And secondly, you know, what I guess my question is, what does the mass migrate, the natural, organic, if you will, although it's always based off of pretty much imperialism? Why do we have this fear? And and I think it kind of stems from a little bit of white supremacy, you know, like, okay, well, if people from the global South are coming into the US, then we're outnumbered now and they're, you know, and so it just, 
I guess I just don't know where that's coming from. I don't and buy that. I don't buy that narrative. I think there's always some type of supremacy. Like when the Irish came here, people pushed against the I, Irish. I, I, like no, it, there's I always a new group of people. It's completely economic in my viewpoint. How how are they paid for? Like, like you mean there's like all these, these people that are coming in now, like more recent that we're hearing right. about. So there's always a uh, a limitation in available jobs, right? Especially when you talk about um, how much autom- automation is happening and how AI is going to take a lot of jobs. So there's there's a concern about the inco- economy. How are these people financially taken care of, and how does it affect the U.S. economy? And then the other fear part is always crime, because when when poverty occurs, crime increases. So I think those are like legitimate, genuine concerns that have nothing to do with one's uh, cultural background, ethnicity, skin color. It's like it is truly one of of economics. So you're talking about the need for undocumented workers to support the economy. Sure, there's way too many people that are coming into the United States illegally for them to work, for them to take care of themselves. How are they supported? Where do they go? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if I could answer that from an educated standpoint. I just, I, there's, there's migrant workers all over the country that are constantly moving from state to state to state. But there was always a number that the country could actually uh, care for. I don't know. What's so, that number? But our, our healthcare system isn't set up for this mass yeah. migration. Our workforce isn't set up for it. So what happens to us economically? And there are cultural factors, right? Um, We see when there's mass migration in other countries, you have to adapt to the culture and mores of that that time. So when when we had mass immigration, um, you know, in the late 1800s, early 1900s, everything was about assimilation, uh, to be an American, to be an American. And so there was this accepted culture of integration. Yes, there was always fear of the other. And that's, that's I'm not saying that's not a, not a part of it. But there are real credible concerns uh, economically about what actually happens now, Aaron, with this mass migration. Well, I mean, I think that we could say there are so many factors that are purposefully and structural or systematically decimating our economy, right? It's it's not just mass migration. That certainly could be a factor. But even without that, even if we're just looking at, you know, manufactured inflation in itself and just printing money and printing money and printing money and devaluing the dollar, that's all happening without mass migration. And you know, not that I know too much on the subject. I do, however, work in an industry where I promise you there are plenty of illegal uh, migrants who work. They work. They There's a whole system. They um, have the ability to make social security cards, to make visas. This This is definitely and has been something that is you can work around and in it a lot of these industries will gladly do that because they can then take advantage of the worker uh they can pay the worker less they don't have to abide by any kind of you know labor laws um so i do think this happens on a scale that maybe we're not fully aware of Mm -hmm. is what i would say not being an expert but just from seeing firsthand a little bit of that yeah i mean i I agree with you to an extent. And the other concern I have about this is also there's a reason we have a a legal immigration system and uh legal legal okay. One of those is for national security reasons. Yeah. And what's happening now though is the mass migration that's coming into our flooding our open borders. We have no other period of time that we can compare it to. So when you have three, four, five times the amount of people that have been allowed in at any given time, that overwhelms. That overwhelms the system. Yeah, I just I don't know what the numbers have always been. So it's it's really hard for for me to to weigh in on this because I, I feel like immigration 
especially over the southern border, has been happening for a very long time. The only reason why there might be a, like a flux happening now of more people is um, in anticipation of our election and things getting shut down even more. So maybe there's a, a, a greater push to try and get into the country before the next presidency, whoever that person may be, um, that might there might actually be some reform that, that shuts down that ability to do so. And when you've been basically traveling for months on end um, to try and get to this, this country for a better life, I think there's a greater push right now to just try and get there. But what's happening, I, I couldn't explain. I, I've, I have no idea. Yeah, I'm trying to look at, uh, trying to find numbers, but I, I can. Maybe that's something that we can add to the episode a little bit later. There was something, you know, they, they were doing some of the reform bills and, and what they would allow in. And the, what the number I heard was like 10,000 are allowed to cross on a daily basis. But maybe on, on average, it has been almost double that. Uh, so they're like cutting it in half. Yeah, so if we're going to, if we're going to try to connect this to another part of our conversation, if, if we all agree that there is a transhumanist, anti-human um, depopulation movement from sociopaths that's pretty well organized, uh, the increase in mass migration would be a part of a plan to create that chaos. Um, and the other thing is that whenever the government and the media and Hollywood tells you something is going to happen, you should probably pay attention because it generally does. So like, <laughs> the, like the, the pan- everything Hollywood says, the pandemic, for example, certainly okay. predicted. And the thing that consistently comes out is attack on our, uh, our energy. Yeah. But group. those are all movies that are really exciting to watch because they're catastrophic events. They're not exciting to watch. Sure. They are they're mass manipulation, just like Disney. <laughs> Well, let's leave Bambi out That's of this. Let's leave Dumbo out of this, too. Of the three people here, you are the most brainwashed. You are the most mind-controlled. Maybe. No, definitely. Okay. <laughs> well, how is that negatively affecting my life? I'm a happy person. I take care of my family. I love my family. I'm surrounded by people I care about. Like, at the end of the day, I've got one life to live. Well, I'll go back. I'm to- much happier when I stopped obsessing about all the ways that society was going to collapse and instead focused on how I could help the people around me in real life. I'll go back to what I said when I started. <laughs> the human capacity to deny reality is both fascinating and frightening. And the news cycle is just a series of unfortunate events meant to keep you in fear mode so you'll be too scared to realize it's all an illusion. John, um, I, I Aaron- love what you guys have. No, <laughs> I pulled out your good leave. ones, Aaron. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I will say one thing before I forget that that I would, I would. I'm curious what your thought is on this in terms of just to go back to mass migration here, in in terms of these idea, this idea that you know we have to keep people out. What if the goal is to keep us in? Ooh, speak more about that. She just that, that, flipped it on you. No, that <laughs> that's going up multiple levels deep. Go ahead, explain more what you mean by that. Well, so. We know, right, that uh, surveillance, um, especially, okay, so even going back further, when you mentioned that there are tools that are used overseas, like, you know, more often on marginalized communities, maybe areas where there aren't as many freedoms, even that we have here in the States, before they are implemented in Western countries, right? So if you look, for example, in areas such as like Iraq, Afghanistan, um, even now in Israel and Gaza, uh, there are surveillance, you know, tools that are utilized that far exceed what we would see here. And all of this is meant to track human movement, to keep humans in certain geographical areas. And I believe that the goal and I'm not saying again that it's not multifaceted because it is. And I do believe it's to create destabil- destabilization. However, I also believe that the outcry of people who will say, we need to close our borders, we are being infiltrated, we are being invaded, that will actually be used against us because then there will be all sorts of surveillance tools implemented to keep other people out when in actuality that could really backfire on us wanting to leave. Yeah, that's an interesting point. 
Um, and I, I can definitely understand why that would happen. 